looking at some of your posts, I was stuck on the uh, the three hots and a cot. Three hots and a cot. <laughs> if you want to be, uh, um, if you want to, if you really want to be, and this is why I put three hots and a cot. People in the military know what that means, yeah. right? Three hot meals and a cot <laughs> right. to sleep on. Right. It's it you know at times it's the best thing in the world, right? right? What I put that post for is because a lot of people have this vigilante mindset right now, yeah. right? Let's go to towns that we don't, not even taxpayers in, and let's defend buildings and let's do this. Let's put ourselves in situations that we may have to react. Outcast has a song, right? Right. What's B.O.B., Bombs Over Baghdad. Right. What is they say in the chorus? Don't pull the thing unless you plan to bang. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you put yourself in situations where you might have to use a firearm that you brought because somebody reaches for it, you put yourself in that situation. Yeah. You could be at home. You didn't have to go somewhere else. And I'm glad that people want to go and help and defend things, right? Yeah. But now you've kind of deputized civilians. Yeah. Uh, to, to carry out work that they shouldn't be doing, right? Right. Now, if you had nothing in your heart to where you wanted to fire your weapon, what if I called your bluff? What if you pulled a gun on me, Scott, and I'm like, use it, and I lunge for you. Right. Now I put you and me in a position you never wanted to be in. Right. That's what's happening to people, right? right? And all these people are like, oh, that's patriotism, that's this, that's that. To me, if you really want to serve your country and talk about how we mitigate terrorists, I have a way for you to do it. Yeah. I did it, right? That's what I look at, right? You put yourself in certain situations. There, there's some people that believe that this is leading up to, you know, a modern time civil war type thing. Right. You know, that, that they are defending because the police have been, have been defunded or, or, or the mayors aren't putting these police forces in action. They're actually allowing for this type of thing, which naturally is going to cause anti or uh, vigilantes, right? You know, like everybody wants to be Batman. Everybody, you know? so <laughs> right, yeah. And and a lot of them, uh, you, you don't even have the right equipment for the job, right. right? And like I said, when you are prepared to take it to a certain level, just know it may not be favorable. Yeah, you may have to defend yourself and take a life. Yeah. And now you have that on your conscience for the rest of and, your life. And you might actually end up in jail. Like, in jail, like yeah, the yeah. Dude, Like the dude's you still know, in jail that did that. Right, I mean, you know? Th that 17-year-old kid? 17-year-old kid, yeah. you know? And a lot of people were so... I don't I don't understand the climate of, of the, the nation. I don't understand... Here's what I want to say. Who are the people that wake up in the morning and they have been put in charge of saying who is or is not a decent citizen based upon how they look. Right. When did that happen? Right. How do people get to say, I trust Derek in long sleeves with a smile, but I don't trust him because he has tatted sleeves. He looks, I don't know, right? right? Who? And I know we all do it, but who puts people in those positions to do that? that I feel like that kid, even if his intentions, he wanted to go to rent, uh, render aid, first aid, things like that, my son, you're going to be at home. Yeah. You think I'm going to let my son take an assault rifle into a, a hazardous situation and put him in a situation where he might have to use it as a young man and throw his life away before it even gets started? Yeah. No. But somewhere in that mentality, people think that as a young man right now, I can take an AR and go out here and defend this store because I'll be justified. The nation will justify me, and they did. Yeah. Why is that? Why did, wasn't that kid at home, right? Yeah. He should have, and now, luckily, nothing happened to him. What did he have to do, though? Right. He had to put two, three people down, I think. Yeah, he did. Right? Yeah. And I watched the video. Yeah. Okay? First thing he said after the first guy lost his life, called his buddy. I just dropped a guy, in lack of better terms. Yeah. And he took off running again, right? I think his adrenaline was high, and I think right then is when he realized this ain't Call of Duty. This ain't no video game. In real life, there's no restarts, yeah. respawns. Yeah. You know, and I think people have to, I see a lot of people saying, I'll do this, I'll do that. You know? I mean, 
I just want to live a nice life. That's, I, I that's, just that's, I, 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 I just want to <laughs> I just want to I just want to get through and and love and right. and cherish cherish the opportunity that I have. I got maybe a hundred years on this earth right. if I'm lucky. Right. Like let's, God willing, you know right. exactly. So and and probably only about fifty five of those are productive. Right. You know. Um, so. I don't, there's just no time for that. There's no there's time no... for that. And I think we have to have time for healing. I think there has to be, and I'm not saying that every time someone that looks like me speaks up that people roll their eyes and they're not heard. I think that it's because there is some type of ill attitude towards, uh, and I read a lot of people's comments on different things and fixing things. And and the the most powerful thing I'm seeing in the media right now is word association. Yeah. What words are you attaching to the people that you're talking about? Right. Because that's what people then say over and over again, right? Yeah. You know, if if you were a bully in this uh, market that you're in and the agent showed up at the house same time you did, you're like, get back in your car. <laughs> right? right? You better get back in your car. Right. I got my client here. Right. And he's like, oh, my God, Scott's a bully. <laughs> right? Right. That's going to trickle down. Like, don't show up at the house same time Scott does. Yeah. You ain't going to show it. Yeah. Right. Word association. So then you become a bully. Yeah. Right. I think it's very powerful. Yeah. So I think that what we have to do is really look at as even like you said, as a black community, what do we need to do? I think having uncomfortable conversations. Right. And it can't stop there. Maybe we have to go back to boycotting. Or and what I'm and I, I skipped over what I meant by black people being so marketable. You can go anywhere in the world and see our culture. They yeah. love they love the culture. We do. But you might not love me. Why? Because the culture goes everywhere. TikTok is hip hop culture. Everything you see, professional sports culture, fashion culture, music culture. You even got country music country music artists now that have a little bit of rap in it, there. It's it's called uh it, it is a genre now. It's I mean, a genre. It, you know, I mean, it, it's spilling over. Some yeah. people don't like it. We're going to go downtown. We're going to sit around. We're going to do this. We're yeah. going to get down. Right. Where'd you get that flow from? Right. Right? But at the same time, you can love everything about the culture, right? And everything that it provides for you. Case in point, Post Malone. Post Malone made the song Iverson years ago when he was sleeping on a couch because he decided to go out to L.A., wherever he was at, right? Yeah. In the video, he's paying homage to Alan Iverson, cornrows, everything, right? He's using the culture to make his platform. Then once he got there, he said, if you want to listen to something senseless, brainless, something like that, listen to hip-hop. But hip-hop's what got you on, right? I didn't know he said that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, as a culture, what the hip-hop artist should have done is, really? Posty? Is that what they call him? Posty? Right. Yeah. Really posty? <laughs> no features with Migos. No features with anybody. You know what I'm saying? We're blackballing you. You want to talk about the thing that helped you get on? We cool. No violence. But your business relationship, that's it. Yeah. Now, he's a good artist. Yeah. But the way that he got his buzz, you know what I'm saying? So I think that, and I'm not making this a black-white thing. Please don't think that. I'm just saying that I think that as 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 talented as I feel like my community is, I feel like people love the things that come from the community, but they might not love the issues, or they might not want to talk about them, or they might get irritated by them. Seems like it seems like we want to shove them under the rug a little so, bit sometimes. because it's easier, right? Yeah, it's a lot easier for me in my household to have a conversation if I don't speak about how I really feel, right? Mm -hmm. People are having these conversations around their dinner tables with their families, right? The one thing I'm hopeful is that further generations, we see more um, diverse groups of friends. Yeah. Me and you have them. Yeah. That's why we're sitting here right now. Right. Right? We know the same people. Yeah. And they don't all look like us. Right. But we, 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 get, we, we form that bond, yeah. right? I'm hopeful for that. Yeah. I think that there is a big divide right now in, in the world. I don't know. I'm not going to place it on Donnie. Right. right? I'm not going to put it on Donnie. Right. He cracks me up. He's a genius. Right? Yeah. I'm not going to put it on him. But there is something sadistic about the followers that are willing to do anything for 
I, and really, I, I don't know. But there's something going on right now. And I think that I always tell people that my, the culture, people love, but they might not love everything that comes with it. You can't, like the Bible, you can't pick you what can't you want pick them. You, and say you're a sinner because you cuss, but I'm not a sinner because I get mad or yeah. quick to anger or something like that. So I think that uh, I've had a lot of tough conversations with people, uh, coworkers, uh, family, friends. And I, my, my job is not to change how you feel because I probably can't. But let me give you a different perspective, right? Yeah. Let me let me put it to you. Every time that I talk about something with my sister or a relationship, she'll say, what if that was me, Derek? Ooh, changes the narrative, right? right. I'll be daggone if I want somebody to, a man to be with my sister a certain type of way. I want him to be the best, right? right? So she'll put that into that perspective. Sometimes you have to tell people, okay, it's happening to this group right now. What if it was happening to you more often? Yeah. Would that change anything? You know, and I, all I want people to do is just look at what's going on and say, hey, this is a problem, right? Now, I'm not looking for, for a handout. I'm not looking for anything. And you're not trying to start an argument. Not trying to start an argument, you're not, not at you're all. Not, you're not comparing one thing to another thing. You're just comparing, you're just using your thing. I'm just right? using my thing, and I might be wrong. And there's people that might watch this and be like, oh, well, there's crime in this community. There's crime in that community. But I'm telling you from what I know that people do not feel, do you really feel, Scott, that if there was, all right, let me let me put it to you like this. A lot of rebuttals I hear for men and women of color is, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Why can't we talk about what we're talking about instead of bringing in things you've never experienced? Yeah. How many bad neighborhoods have you rode through in Crenshaw? Right. <laughs> I've never been. Actually, you know what? You know what I'm I, I, many, I rode by many, the Crenshaw exit. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how many? How many? How many conversations? I haven't. Yeah. How many conversations have these people that are so concerned with these targets and these things are happening in these neighborhoods, and you're so concerned with a fabricated statistic uh, like black on black crime, right? Because anytime you put a group of people in an area, every interaction that they have is with a person of the same race. Yeah. So of course the statistics are going to be a little bit more because everybody that lives in this 800 building apartment stack is the same, yeah. right? But you know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's really look at it. Are you actually concerned with that statistic or using it as a rebuttal because you really don't care, right? If you really cared about it, let's go do some work. Yeah. 